Okay, so this is just a really quick and dirty video showing you how to update both the firmware and the maps on your Alpine INE W990BT, which is also the head unit that you find in a Lotus Evora 400 from 2016. So you're probably looking at this video if you have an Alpine head unit and you're struggling to work out how to perhaps update your firmware or update the maps. So I thought I'd just do this quick video as I decided to have a go at doing this myself. Um, so the car doesn't matter, but just for clarity, because you may have come from a Lotus Forum or something, um, I'm doing this on a Lotus Evora 400, uh, a tw late 2016 model. And, um, the car comes out of warranty towards the end of the year and I thought that it might still be possible to update the maps without any cost. Turns out it was, um, so this is a good thing. Um, so I thought I'd share this um, process with you. So um, apologies, I'm using um, a Windows 10 laptop for this. I don't have any screen recording software for Windows because I normally use a Mac. So this is just um, laptop out, out of my workshop. Um, so I am just using the camera over the screen and obviously in the, in the car for the overlays, but hopefully you'll get the general gist. So um, to start off with, if we just look at updating the firmware, so the first thing you need to identify is the location of the USB port that's connected to your head unit. So for me, this is in the glove box. For you, depending on your car or the installation, it's perhaps in the glove box or hanging down underneath the glove box or something somewhere. You probably know where it is because you've probably got an iPod connected to it or a USB stick already um, that you're playing music from. So what you're gonna need to do is find uh, a USB stick that is, I recommend at least four gigabytes. So then, it's, then you can use this stick for both uh, firmware update, then format it, and then do the um, update for your maps as well. Um, it needs to be FAT32 formatted, so just make sure if you're using a Windows machine, it's not NTFS, and if it's if you're coming from a Mac, it's not um, Mac OS journaled or something. So it needs to be uh, a FAT formatted uh, USB uh, device. Now, I will say I started off doing this first time with a two gigabyte. Um, USB stick that did, did work and I wanted to do the maps it didn't have enough room I tried an 8 gigabyte uh, USB stick a couple of them actually and neither of them worked um, but I was sure that obviously these sticks did work in the computer but they weren't working uh, with Alpine for reasons I don't know why uh, in the end I personally ended up using an SD card adapter put an 8 gigabyte SD card in there and it worked fine so just letting you guys know if you have some problems it may be that the device you're using just doesn't want to talk nicely. So, first thing you need to do, I'll put some links in the description. Um, you obviously need to have a, a, an account with Alpine um, and the, the Navi Extras page to download the maps, but for the firmware, you don't. Uh, so I'll put a link to the firmware um, at the time of creating this video. Basically, you go there, download it, um, it comes in a, in a compressed zip. You need to open up that zip and copy the folder um, over to your blank USB stick. Um, it's important that you keep that folder structure uh, as you copy it across. Um, don't, do, don't move the compressed file, don't move the contents of the folder on, because the, the whole folder in its entirety needs to go on. Then go down to the car, um, turn on the ignition, um, go to the, the tuner or radio, whatever you prefer to call it, have it um, on that screen, then plug in the USB stick uh, into that USB port and after about one to two seconds it will pop up with a message saying that you know it's detected something and you want to do the firmware update you can press OK or you pre can press uh, cancel. So you press OK and it will immediately start going through this process. It checks the contents of the card, it then flashes the BIOS, then it um, does a flash on the Bluetooth, and then it flashes uh, the Micron controller. And altogether, uh, I didn't time it specifically, but you'll see the, the time on my videos as when it started, when it finished, 
you can just leave it. So once it starts flashing, go away, have a drink, come back in maybe half an hour, it probably should be finished. And it will just basically um, tell you it's okay, it will reboot and get you back at uh, the main screen with the firmware. So super straightforward. Obviously with any of these things, I probably should have said this at the beginning of the video, uh, I'm no expert, uh, I'm not Alpine certified or whatever you perhaps uh, are supposed to be. Um, so any of these firmwares or updates you do at your own risk, if something goes wrong or, or your battery goes flat or, or something, um, you know, I'm not responsible. So perhaps you want to leave your car running if you can or make sure your battery's got a good level of charge before you start doing this. So that's the firmware out of the way. Now we will look at the maps, which is a little bit more complicated because it requires additional software. So you need to install the Navi Extras app on your Windows machine. I'll put a link um, to that. Um, and basically you have to have an account with Alpine. So you download um, the application, you log in, and it will basically be asking you to install uh, a USB uh, device um, or an SD card. Now what you need to do is go back to your car um, with a, a, a blank USB stick or, or, or a card with the adapter like I'm using. Um, obviously make sure it's wiped um, and you're going to plug that in. Then you will go to your um, navigation screen and I tend to click on the, the bottom left hand um, button for like, uh, the access to the quick options. Uh, top right hand side there's like a cog with a, an arrow you click on that scroll down and you'll see a button that says update you press update as long as that usb device has been recognized you'll have an option to press go and it will basically then say do you want to copy or, or download information uh, to the, the usb device basically what that's doing is taking your serial number and your map versions and everything and kind of um creating a file on this USB device that then when you come back upstairs or wherever you're doing it uh, and plug your into your laptop that Navi Extras app is going to read that file to understand obviously what version uh, of map data you have whether you're entitled to free updates or, or what have you obviously the same process will apply here if you have bought the maps and you're not getting them for free as part of your package uh, the, the same process will apply so I say we come back up we pop this in um, it will automatically, as long as the app is open, recognize and register your device to those maps. And then it will basically query that data file on your card and then we'll start the download process. Depending on your connection, this will take a while. Uh, the servers also seem quite slow at Alpine. So it's downloading around just under three gigabytes of data. Um, so once that's finished, it will then validate all the files. And it's basically downloading obviously map updates um, for all the countries uh, in Europe um, in this example for me so obviously it's going to take a while once that's done it's completed then obviously safely eject your USB device go back down um, to your car um, if like me I didn't uh, quit out or anything so I just quit out a few times press OK go back to that main radio screen um, back to the navigation, back into update, plug that um, USB stick back in again. This time it's gonna, uh, I'm gonna select the bottom option which is to copy the data across and it's basically the reverse. It's, it's copying all this uh, data on the card onto the SD card in the head unit that's hidden away and updating all the maps. When that's finished, it will reboot um, the device asking you to you know, press okay and, and remove the, the USB device and everything. It will reboot and then you have uh, the latest maps and I could tell straight away for me uh, that the layout looked slightly different so a little bit different colors on the map and uh, the area I live in has some new roads and I could see those on the map so I'm really happy with how it turned out so I hope it was helpful I'd say a quick dirty video not, not very well um, produced but hopefully helps you understand uh, how to do this and gives you a bit of comfort if you're a bit worried about doing it yourself instead of asking the dealer or a, or a garage to do it and paying them unnecessarily. Thanks for watching this video. A thumbs up would be really appreciated. If you're interested in other geek type videos, please consider subscribing to Spectrum Geeks. Why not also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter? 
And before you leave, why don't you check out one of these other videos that may be of interest. Thanks again for watching.